Welcome back for another segment of Coffee with Mare, everyone. So I wanted to give you guys an update on what the week was like today. Um, I had a beginning of the week that was quite challenging, as I had uh, discussed in my last video. And then I kind of woke up one morning and I was like, okay, I think we're doing all right. And after that, the next day, I had to go on a little road trip. Everything went really great. And it was so wonderful to have the energy to go out and connect with some friends of mine that I haven't seen for a very long time, people that are very important to me. So I, uh, I'm really grateful for that managed to do what I needed to get done. And that's something that, you know, when I've gone on trips like that in the past, where I know that I'm for sure going to see one or two people, I've usually kept it at that because it's, it's not that the people are exhausting. It's just the being out and sitting upright and having to focus and be in a conversation and be present can be really challenging when you have a lot of brain fog and in particular when you lose your thoughts in the middle of um in the middle of a sentence and you're going oh i don't know really don't know what i was talking about but moving on let's just keep going and you know with my friends that are aware of how my brain fog comes and goes it's not a really big deal and we just laugh about it now so this time around, I just felt like brain was firing on all cylinders and that was such a relief to me because I felt physically, I felt pretty good, but mentally being able to just to express myself in a way that I feel like I, I'm really, you know, finding the words that I need and that's been a challenge for the last few years. So brain fog is no joke. And okay, so I'll, I'll tell you guys a little story. When I first heard the term brain fog, it always made me think of the movie with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan called Joe versus the Volcano. I love that movie. It's super, super campy. It's not like it won any Oscars or anything, but it was just entertaining and it was funny and it was cute. So there's this part where Tom Hanks's character, Joe, goes to a doctor and the doctor t tells him he has a brain cloud. <laughs> and that's kind of how the rest of the movie unfolds is as a result of him getting this diagnosis of brain cloud. So years ago when I first heard the term brain fog, that's where it my, my mind went. <laughs> and it just has stuck with me ever since. Um, until I actually started experiencing brain fog though, then I was like, okay, I totally get what this means. It, if you have never experienced brain fog and you're a woman and you've had kids, it's very similar to baby brain, okay? Um, and most women that have had kids often still say after they've had them and that they're, you know, not pregnant anymore. Yeah, the baby brain never really goes away. And I do agree with that. And it's quite funny when you're sitting in a group of moms and it's almost like playing ring around the rosy with topics because halfway through the topic, someone will forget where they were going. So we just move on to the next one. And then half an hour later, you end up picking up the same conversation. <laughs> um, it's, I, I mean, it's it's a funny thing. It, it's a girl girl thing, you know, dudes, if you've never had kids and you've never had brain fog, imagine that hangover feeling that you have when somebody asks you, what would you like for breakfast? And your answer is, um, breakfast, yeah. So it's like, you, you just can't even seem to make a simple decision in that state at times. Um, so having a full on conversation. And of course I, I love to discuss life with my friends and, you know, find out what's going on in their lives and, you know, and sharing in that. And when you don't feel like you can be really present, like I've always felt like there was just like, I'm missing half the conversation sometimes. And that's been, that's been 
hard. I don't say that a lot of things are hard, but when you start feeling like your cognitive functions are going, that can be, it's a really big challenge. Um, so, you know, if you do have some people in your lives that have brain fog or they have, you know, difficulties with their short-term memory, um, cause it is primarily with short-term memory and you know, just, just be kind. And if they look at you and say, you know, oh, let's just move on. Just, just move on. Chances are whatever it was they wanted to convey to you will come back to them later on in the conversation. And if not, that's okay too. Um, it's just, it's just best to kind of roll with it and see how that person's going to deal with it. Or if it's for yourself, and you're sitting down with someone that you haven't seen for a really long time, it can be kind of daunting to not be feeling yourself and trying to have conversations like you used to. So it, it's just worth saying, hey, you know, can you be patient with me? My brain's working a little slow. Um, I might need a little bit more time to find my words. And, and most people, I mean, most people will be understanding. And if they're not, then maybe they're not someone you want to be visiting with anyway. <laughs> so just kind of keep that in mind that, you know, the kindness of others is wonderful, but be kind to yourself. Um, Cause the harder you are on your, on yourself, the less likely you are to maybe want to have help or understanding from other people. And when you get to the stage where you just don't want to talk about anything anymore, it's shutting other people out of your life who probably want to have your back and be supportive and care for you in one way or another. So try and be open. Um, and, and that's, I've talked about isolation before with chronic illness and it's something that I think a lot of people experience. Um, you know, and I can tell you from my experiences as much as possible in the last few years, I have, um, I've tried really hard when those invitations come for coffee or for a little visit. I do my best so that I can still spend some time with my friends and the ones who really care are accepting of how I happen to turn up in that day. You know, I have I have my really good girlfriends where we show up at each other's houses wearing pajamas and we just sit around and you know, and, and it's no big deal. And those are definitely my people regardless of whether I show up in pajamas or not. But it's important to have people in your life that aren't judging you where you at, where you are at, see? losing some words. Um, I did have a little migraine yesterday and I'm very, very like migraine hungover at the moment. So I'm still kind of, <laughs> there's a few words that are maybe not coming out in the order they're supposed to, but they'll make it out eventually. So, but yeah, judgment is something I feel um, many people with chronic illness either fear judgment or that they have been judged really harshly by people that they th thought were there for them. And that chronic illness, it, it really shows you who your friends are. It shows you who is going to help you along your journey. And it's okay. The people who are not going to be along for the ride Sometimes it's just better that way. It might be hard to accept in the beginning when you have people that are kind of dropping off left, right, and center. However, knowing that the ones who are still there and that they always have been and that they always will, you know, I'm talking about the friends where you can go a year without talking or a couple of years without seeing each other in person, but when you sit down, it's like you pick up where you left off. And I have a lot of friends that I can say are just so accepting. <laughs> um, I didn't feel that way when I first started getting sick because when you start, you know, declining the fun things to go do because you're too tired or you're not feeling well enough to go, 
sometimes those are your fair weather friends. Sometimes those invitations come from the people that you know you talk to almost on a daily basis, but wherever they are, if you can love them where they're at, even if they can't do the same for you, you can send them on their way with well wishes to be out in the world and just go live their lives the way that they want to. And that also leaves you kind of in peace to you know, be with the people who really understand with what you're going through. Um, so yeah, I, I think we'll have to do an entire segment on friendships and relationships at one point and discuss that a little bit more fully. Um, I think that's something I would really like to talk to, uh, talk about with a guest. So I think we'll reserve that subject for another time because, you know, I can share my experiences, but I also think it's great when you can hear a different person's point of view and not just my point of view, but people that are new to you that I'm going to introduce you to. So I think I'm going to keep it at that because this light is really hurting my eyes today. But I was uh, determined that regardless of how tired I was today, I was going to at least pop in and say hello and have a little bit of hot water with you. Oh, hot water. It's so funny. I heard someone call that silver tea the other day. I don't know if it's because they put it in a silver coffee mug or if it's just because it's water. Who knows? But I, I kind of like the whole silver tea thing. So we might be, um, <laughs> we might be going with that. Um, because it's cute. It's funny. I like things like that. So anyhow, if you have liked today's video, please be sure. Oh, sorry. My mouth is really dry. <laughs> mm. If you have liked this video, just make sure that you give us a big thumbs up, just like down below and be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever the new videos are landing on YouTube. And for tonight, this is Sick Mom, checking out. <laughs>